We're talking about more ways to be generous. This is lesson four with generosity, and we're going to try to be pretty direct, give you guys some ideas of how you can be generous. Let's roll the footage. What about it? What about it? Well, good after Thursday afternoon to you, Bob. Yeah, man. Had a great day. Uh, how about you? Good day. I enjoyed our, our morning that we spent together. I know. I've been thinking about generosity. Uh, you know, we Chris and I get the opportunity to help out with the local school system, and we're not going to name it because uh, it's a real unique thing. And it's pretty cool how that happened, too, uh, how generous the Lord was just to put opportunities in the way and it just kind of fell in your lap. Yeah, it was, you know, the the way it got started was, I don't remember, I, th- I think the way it went down was, I'd read my Harley to the church building, and somebody downtown that was in our benevolence program, one of the ways that we try to be uh, generous, right. needed one of their kids had won a bicycle, and they needed a bicycle carried from their school to their apartment or whatever they were living in Mm -hmm. and when i showed up down there i mean you know i'm I'm a pretty much a blue jeans and t-shirt kind of guy but i had the church van with me i was driving the church van because it looked real funny with a bicycle on the back of my harley the elephant locked up again the elephant (laughs) man i hate that elephant (laughs) we've been working for 30 minutes trying to get this powerpoint thing to work right anyways we thought we had it yeah so the the superintendent just happened to be there when I was there and uh, he just asked me what I was doing, you know, and I told him I was there to get one of the uh, students a bicycle. And I said, Hey, what would it look like if a church wanted to be involved in your school? And he, you know, do you remember what he told I told you what he told me? Uh, you told me, but I don't remember. He said, I don't know. None's ever asked us before. <laughs> so I handed him my card. I said, well, when you want to have that conversation, just let me know. And so he said, okay. So he called us back, and the I think you went – did you go with me to the first meeting over there? Oh, uh, yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I couldn't remember if you went to the first one or not, but I know you've been to every one since then. But, you know, it was just a really interesting situation that worked out for us and because and, we told him that we wanted to be – we wanted to make an impact. Yeah, that's right. And, and it was going to, by and large, be from this very thing that we're talking about today is generosity. That's right. Uh yeah, so we got we got to spend the morning with with, uh, with the kids, and it was pretty cool that um, we were talking about not wasting energy. We're going into the summertime, and the kids are are going into school, so we get to go in and spend thirty minutes to an hour with the kids at uh, at a particular school, and get to show them some kind of some unique things. Chris is always creating stuff, and and uh, and so it's pretty cool that that we can share with them. Uh, we're, we're really we're sharing the gospel in a in a we're in a different way and uh it's a unique way it's a unique no way that's right and we're planting seeds with these kids and so uh y'all be praying about that and so we we're talking about wasting energy and it was funny to watch chris had built this motor and when we were using this motor with pneumatic power and different ways to to try to charge phones and to get volts out of it and it was pretty cool and so i got to thinking about a way that i've been neglecting you and not be generous with you, but it didn't hit me until today. House payment? Yes, absolutely. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, Thank you. Well, Chris, it didn't hit me until you're trying to run this 150 PSI into this little bitty pinhole, and you're trying to hold it on there. Well, I didn't realize, but on my desk is the little needle oh, extender the, the, thing. That- the inflator for the... Yeah, so like it's a, it's a little bitty whatever. part that would. Well, no, it's but it's it's not that small. It's not needle small, but it's a. Uh, it's it's the more ex- direct. It's the extension, yeah. That would that yes. would have helped you put it in the hole to to make it more. Well, we got it sorry. done. That's right. But you know, it was fun because the, um, you know, in generosity, for mm-hmm. example, I can spend a lot of time being generous. In other words, you know, like like let's look at First Corinthians thirteen. Sure. The Apostle Paul talks about generosity in in 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 
verse number three. He says, and though I bestow all my goods to do what? Feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned. That's pretty generous. It's pretty generous. So you've given everything you had. And not only that, you've given your body yeah. to be burned. But I have not love. It profits me nothing. I, I don't know what more you, how much more generous that you could you could be than to, to give all your goods to feed the poor. I mean, Jesus told the rich young ruler, that's one thing that you lack. That's right. And but there's a, but he also said there's a, there's there's more than the one thing that you lack. He says, you you sell all that, and you come follow me. That's right. Go, and, and when Paul says, if I give all those things, mm-hmm. I give my body to be burned, I give all my whatever I got to the poor and I have not love. Now, you know, most people would look at that and they try to make this connection. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago about what real love is. Yeah. And it's not just an emotion. It's not just a feeling. Mm-hmm. And They come and go. They come and go. Exactly right. But love is, is an action. And so though I give all the things I've got, though I give my body to be burned, if there's no action – Right, if there's nothing beneficial that's going to come out of it, I've done nothing. It profits me nothing, is what Paul says. And so when we're going to be generous, like there's there's no we've got to realize that there's can be no end to what we're going to do. I mean, you, you think about this in John, you know, this John 13, 14, 15, 16 scenario where you get the foot washing with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Jesus is really saying there's just there's going to have to be a no lines that you're not willing to draw. That's right, and and that's the that's the thing that I was getting at was was I was just trying to put those two together that that selling what you have is we think well that's a big deal and that is generosity. All right, selling what I have to give to the poor, but but then come and following Jesus. That's the love portion. That's right, and that's the that's that desire is to, is to truly follow Him, and and that's the whole thing because if I if I'm just giving away to be given away. But if I don't have the motive behind it of love, if I don't have the motive behind it of generosity, you know, the Lord's always checking our heart. Mm-hmm. He's always that that's the checks and balances that I, I can take the Lord's Supper, but if I'm not examining myself, he says, Hey, I'm eating and, and drinking damnation to my soul. So the heart's gotta be right in those situations. So same way with generosity and, and being generous. So man, I mean I of all the generosity verses in the Bible I could think of, like first Corinthians thirteen three, I mean Brilliant scripture, good job. Well, and, and it's because what it does is it shows us why we should be generous. Yeah. But, you know, there, there's, you know, Paul in here, there's this bicker that they're having over the miraculous. And mm-hmm. and Paul's talking about, you know, all this stuff that's going to come, the canonization of the scriptures as we understand it. You know, all this stuff is going to happen. And it's hap- all those things are happening so that we can understand what God has done with us. And our, our one we talked a few weeks ago about, he's generous with his word. Yeah. He's generous with giving us this thing that we need to get to heaven. We access salvation just like you so eloquently put last week on our podcast. We access salvation through the word who is Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, and so... If we we have got if I give everything I've got, all my money, all my time, all my whatever, and I'm not getting people to heaven, I that's I may as well just hoard it. Yeah, and you might as well your hands may be dirty just like that right there, but it's it would just be a work system and not a love system. Yeah, and so what we got to see is that if we're going to be generous, there's a command, right? I mean, mm-hmm. this is a command. We looked at it last week, Acts 20, verse 35. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> the words of the Lord Jesus. Hey, and listen, y'all, we're, we're learning too. We're always trying to be students. So I hope that's you, right. hope y'all understand from our podcast that we're not the know-it-all. It's unscripted. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why I had to Google it last week because I forgot where it was. <laughs> but, the you know, so you, you get to see this. We can do a lot of things. There, see, there's a lot of people that t- tie, directly tie Christianity to generosity in the sense of we should be doing a lot of good for people. Yeah, and it should flow from us. It should be the That's fruit right. of it. But it's not the motive to do good. Uh, yeah, amen. Mm-hmm. The motive is not to do good. It's to get to heaven. And it's pretty cool. Paul's like, hey, even if I speak like an angel, right? you think about a God used these angels as messengers. Like mm-hmm. I can imagine being Mary or Joseph, you know, mm-hmm. an angel coming to me and telling me these things, and and think about how convincing they would have to be. That's right. You, you got what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like Mary, in you is the Savior. 
I know. And think about this. You know, and think then about Joseph. Like I'm telling you, like your old lady didn't cheat on you, but yeah, it's it's good. Yeah, it's you know all that's good. the way we would break it. What's down. in here is of the Lord. Yeah, right. So you think about this messenger, how well of a speaker he is. That Look, he can, bro. Give, I'm telling you. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> she's not, she's not running around on you. Like think right. about trying to convince somebody that when this has yeah. never happened to humanity. Paul says, even though I could do that, look, like, what yeah. if I could do that? If I had this great ability, this all whatever this talent is, but if I'm not using it for love, and Paul, in the context here, love directly correlates with the fact that you're getting people to heaven. Mm-hmm. That's why in chapter 14, he do, he gives this scenario of like, why it's so important for people to understand what you're saying so that the one coming in can, can hear what you're, how can they not give amen at the saying of thanks? You know, all these things are in there because Paul wants them to understand that the most important thing we can be doing is getting people to heaven. That's right. And so generosity for us as Christians, it should tie directly to the fact that we're being evangelistic with it. That's right. Because if I'm just if I'm just giving away beans from Walmart that I bought for eighty eight cent just because I feel good about it, there's no real advantage to it. Yeah, I can't think of a more way to be generous than to be generous with the gospel. So that's what we want to uh, we want to talk about today is like maybe some direct ways to to be generous. But I like how you prefaced this with with this uh, segment in that the the motive behind what I'm doing is is about souls and that's what should be behind every bit of your generosity that it should be about you going to heaven or someone else going to heaven because well, let's face it i can be real generous and i can be generous to my own kids i can be generous to my own family but if i'm just buying the next xbox game and if i'm calling buying grand theft auto 5 or 2 or whatever it is where they're dropping f bombs and killing whoever they want to on the streets or whatever, I'm just going to walk up and sucker punt some dude and, you know, or, or whatever this game is. If I think that I'm being generous by giving something and it doesn't have a good motive behind it, or, okay, so let's take, let's take GTA off the thing. But let's say that I'm just, I'm just by Madden what, 21 or whatever, and I'm giving that to my kids so that they can, so that they can use it. Well, Okay, I'm I'm being generous to them. I'm giving them something, but but what's the what's the idea behind the giving? Is that going to benefit them? So that was the whole thing of my son wanted to get Xbox Live. Well, in order for him to do that, he had to he had to present to me and his youth group why that would be beneficial for him. And of course, and I told him like we started off the whole year like this. I mean, I had the the Rona when he asked me about it, you know, Dad, can I get this? And isn't it amazing how kids will ask you? Yeah, they don't care. They don't care. Like yeah. he's like your he, arms he cut take... off and it's spraying. You're like, Dad, Dad, let me stop a second. Yeah. Dad, this is about me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so he he texts me whenever I've got the coronavirus in in January, and he's like, I wonder if I can get Xbox Live, you know. <laughs> And so it's like, well, lucky for you, I've got the next eight days to lay here in bed and think about it. That's right. So, exactly. so you know, I started messing back, but I said, I said, I want you to present a lesson, but I, I'm not going to give you any advice on it. This is pass or fail. And so how are you going to utilize Xbox Live? To ha- how is it going to get you to heaven? And how can, it, you, how can you use it to get somebody else to heaven? And I said, and you can't use dad's advice you have to use advice from at least three different brothers, and that's what he did. He went to he went to three different guys. You were one of them that he got advice from. Now, did he give the most convincing lesson in the world? No, but my idea is it's just saying, I want you, son, to think about everything that you do, and use it for God's glory. And that's and that's what we should be doing with all of our with generosity. So when we think about generosity, then and that's that's the perfect thing. So. You know, we talked about a little bit last week about the genus, you know, that I was generous birth, right? So because I was born of generous birth and I have the responsi- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I had this responsibility then to utilize all my my uh It only took re- like four seconds for the light bulb to go off of what you were talking about. That's fine. Yeah, as long ahead. as it came on. Yeah, go ahead. You're not in the dark. The you know, I've got all these resources available to me. Mm-hmm. So what am I gonna use, right, as a person? Well, that those resources are are different for everybody. So if I'm going to be generous with that may that may require you, you see I think that we like writing a check. Why? Why do you think that? Well, I think we like writing a check because making money generally speaking, especially to Americans, if you want to, 
is a pretty easy thing. I mean, if you want to... Yeah, if, everybody's hiring right now. Yeah, I mean, you come down to Gandy, like we're leaving for mine and your house coming down this way. I mean, you can count as many hiring signs as there are as, as uh, state road signs. Yep, get out and work, folks. Right, exactly. And so, but if... the and, and on top of that, I mean, like, look at that little junker car that Joe sold. I mean, Joe sold that... Joe Brumfield, one of our members here, sold some little girl car for... Five thousand dollars, and I mean, like he sold his Prius for five grand. Whatever, the, no, it's not even a Prius. It's the little non-battery one. What's that thing called? A Yaris or something? Yaris, like? yeah, it's a Yaris. Yeah, mm-hmm. whatever. He sold it for five thousand dollars. Like great I'm thinking, job, like, Joe. You slide the decimal place over one spot to five hundred, you may get that for it. But, but I don't because, think he never did change his tag out either. It was still I, a Hawaii tag. Well, and and it's because you know there's so much money flowing mm-hmm. right now, and so yeah, easy come. Easy, Easy go. go. Right. Well, I think that for all of us, we got to be real careful that we don't think that generosity is just writing a check because, mm. you know, the you really consider like how much money we have as Americans. It's it's we have a lot of wealth. Yeah, I don't even realize that. So we can write a check, and then we can feel real good about ourselves because we wrote a check. Well, you know, generosity goes a whole lot deeper than writing a check mm. because you know here's what happens. I, I think a lot of times. Now, I can't speak for everybody, but there's certainly been brothers that have done research in the church about this. And and the number that they come to, that the average amount that the Christian that, that a Christian gives is four percent. Okay. That's, that's the average amount. Okay, so I'm not I'm not going to sit here and we're not going to talk about averages or anything like that, but I just want to think about these things. Just statistical value. If the average Christian gives four percent, now the the average Jew the, the average Jew would have had to have given at least 10% of their mm-hmm. income. Now, that's not including all their, you know, because we don't even consider, we consider our collection part of our sacrifice, I suppose. Well, you know, all the sacrifices that they would have had to been made, yeah. you know, all those things would have had to I go. I lamb every morning, every evening, every Sabbath. Perpetually. Yeah. You know, uh, for your ever in your generation. Not to, and then, then the Lord puts in there, yeah, 29. not to include your free will offerings and yes, sin things. offerings and all these things. But they didn't consider, we, if we're just going to consider every Jew had to give 10%, well, the, the thing of it is for us is that we think writing a check is easy. Well, it's because we got so much money and it's easy for us to write a check. Well, what we do is we say, okay, I want to live this certain type of lifestyle, right? I want to have this kind of house. This kind of car, mm-hmm. this kind of clothing or whatever, guns, you know, ammo, yeah. you know, whatever. You, you And then then what we do is we kind of scale it back a scotch, right, because we, we know we've got to give to the Lord. Yeah. And that's just not the way that the Lord wants us to do it. Everything that we have, every, if, if you, I, I heard Brother Tom say this Sunday morning, you take somebody that's got money problems and you teach them that the money that they have is really just God's money. They're just being a steward of God's. So you, you take somebody that's in a financial position at work, mm-hmm. that their job is to spend the company's money and give accountability for it. At the end of the year, if you got X amount of money in your budget and they come to you and you say, okay, you had a uh, million dollars in your budget and you say, and they say, what did you spend it on? You say, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. I don't right? remember. You know, like we got we got that TV. Yeah. You know, we, we got that. But well, okay, where's it? Got a new depth finder on right. the boat. <laughs> exactly. You know, uh, it, well, the, the the kicker to it is that that person understands that their job requirement is to be accountable and a steward of the money that they're given. Yeah. And so if we can see ourselves as people that are to be wise stewards of the money that we're given, then it won't matter. So you think about this. There is never a percentage that's giving for any Christian in, in, in any way. So, for example, hospitality. Every Christian is supposed to be what? Hospitable. Hospitable. So that means. Yeah. So what What does that mean? What, what kind of measurement do you put on it? So that means that I got to be hospitable if I live in a hovel. What's right? that? I, I mean, like a little. You know, stick hut mm-hmm, with a dirt floor, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, I don't have any. I don't have any floor, no running water, or no nothing. I still have to be what? Hospitable. If I live in this old boy, <laughs> these guys were, uh, asked me my address the other day, and uh, I sent them the address to the White House, <laughs> sixteen hundred Pennsylvania Avenue, <laughs> and the. Uh, so if I live in the White House, guess what? Yeah. I'm still supposed to be hospitable. Right. So it's the same thing with our money. It's not that, that I have to give a certain a value like the widow. She gave all that she had. Why? Mm-hmm. 
But she gave, it was what was in her heart. She gave all, and she yeah. gave what was in her heart. And so for us as Christians, you know, if we're going to talk about money, there's no there's no number that you know you may like my family. We've set a number mm-hmm. that we set aside. We and said that's what it says. You you should. That's exact purpose, I mean, right? Purpose in your heart. Exactly right. But it, it if we're just giving God the leftovers, are we being generous? No. You know, you, when you sit down to do marriage counseling with people, doesn't everybody always say something like, "Like I'm going to put God first in our marriage"? Oh yeah. Doesn't everybody always? I mean, yeah. I, I, I want to put. I'm going to put. You know. And I ask them, well, how? Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, how are you going to do that? What's it going to look like to you? You know, what what will you put into practice that will make sure that God is first in your marriage? Well. You know, and it's always things like, we'll come to church and this and that and the other. Well, mm-hmm. you know, one of the ways that you're going to do that is how you're generous. How you're generous with your time. How you're generous with your money. How you're generous with your attitudes. How you're generous with your, you know, your talents. Because, you know, on, on Judgment Day, God's going to look at how we were generous with everything. Not just my checkbook. Not just my routing number. But my talents. My time. So if you've got a certain talent, I mean, like you think of it, let's, let's, let's quit picking on Joe and his girl car for a minute. But let's, let's talk about, like last weekend, Joe had a, a, a training shooting thing. Mm-hmm. At his house. Up there at his house. Well, y'all were going off doing y'all's um, hike. Yeah, we went to Dunn's Falls. Yeah, yeah you kids. took the youth group up mm-hmm. to the, the – Dunn's Falls. Dunn's Falls. Yeah. Well, you know, Joe has a talent. He's a ranger. He wears the ranger patch. And I don't know how he got it. I mean, maybe he sent off for <laughs> proofs of purchases from Kellogg's or something. I, I don't know. Yeah, if you, they do have a buy-in program with the Army that you can buy the Ranger tab. Okay, I thought that maybe what Joe did. but He didn't go through the 60-day training. He didn't, okay. So <laughs> yeah. the, But Joe's using his talent, and, and, and he made it a very much – you just think, well, how are you going to be up here shooting guns and this and that and the other? Well, Joe had – Jerry Westbrook, one of our members, do the Devo mm-hmm. afterwards. He's going to make it a, a very much a devotional thing, you know, to where we can we can. Yeah, and he let guys know on the front end. So, and it's not just church members. Like he's trying to be evangelistic with this, and and so he's yeah, using, half the people there want Christians. Yeah, he's using his property to to uh, he's built some little obstacle courses. He's built a range and uh, just some practical things for for guys to to get their heart rate up as well as to shoot at the same time and put a little, you know, top shot, a little competition into it. And so that's a way to, to, to give back with what God's blessed you with. And so there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with owning a bass boat, but what are you using that bass boat for? One of the awesome things that I, I remember that, that one of the elders told me whenever I moved down here, and of course they, I don't know what they told you, but they said, Bob, we don't want you, you know, in the, we don't want you in the office all the time. You know, we want you to be able to, to, to go out and to, to use your talents to glorify God and make build relationships with people. And they said, you know, you, there, may, there may be some people that you may not be able to get into a study with just by saying, hey, would you like to have a Bible study? They said, but, you know, you take them fishing, you can use my boat anytime you want to to take them fishing and build that relationship. Maybe you're getting a biblical discussion that's going to lead into a, to a study. And it's like when we understand that everything that I own can be used for God's glory in some way. So do you have a duck camp? Do you have a hunting lease? Do you own a four wheeler? Do you have a bass boat? Do you own a, a hammer? Rod and rule? A hammer? <laughs> do you have a pond out behind your house? Have you got, uh, some weights that you can, that you can use, use whatever it is that you have for God's glory and think about souls with it. Have you kids? Have you got an Xbox? I don't know if there's any kids that ever listen to our podcast, <laughs> but it's like, do you have an Xbox? Do you have a TV? How can you use those things to, to glorify God? Have you got one of those little Nintendo switches? Well, you can take the gospel with you. I, I dare to say that if you, you know, Liam, he goes around and gets these little Nintendo switches and all these little things. And I, you and ought to the, see him doing this. My wife has told me she saw y'all at a yard sale and she's like, Liam, he was like working it. I'm telling you, Bob, Liam has uh, either way. I don't want to, we're going to get on a tangent yeah. if we don't get there. But, but yes, but so you can, you can take a little Nintendo switch and, and say, hey, let's, uh, let's use this for, you know, let's use this for, for God's glory, and how can you build a friendship with that, and play a game, and and have fun with it, and and spread the gospel? So, a little little news flash here: our we're having we're having different stations for our, our vacation Bible school coming up, and so we're having snow cones as a as a particular station. And part of that part of the we're hiking with Jesus, and and so we're building things also off of a uh, off of uh, Psalm twenty three and. 
looking at the ways that the Lord guides us and the things that he provides for us as we as we hike through life, and he's our shepherd. So well, one of those is like, well, how do you use snow cones to glorify God? Well, my cup runs over. And you look at the blessings that he gives us along the hike and the thing, his grace and the things that he gives us. And so that's the whole idea is, is eating a snow cone, how can we use that as a teaching tool to teach a kid about how that, that God, man, our cup just runs over from his blessings. You know, the the challenge that I think about, and we're getting sh- short on time, mm-hmm. but the, the challenge we, we need to understand is that sometimes we use, there, there, there gets to be synonymous churchy terms. You got what I'm saying? Yeah. But but our listeners might not get what they're saying, so give me a couple. Repentance. That's mm-hmm. a churchy term, yeah. right? Or um, uh, here's, a, here's one, propitiation. Propitiation, yeah. You know, that's a, that's the a, mercy seat, the government. Yeah, yeah, that's a churchy term, yeah. right? Evangelism is a churchy term mm-hmm. sometimes. Yep. And what happens with that is that it becomes synonymous with a churchy term in the sense that, that we think about evangelism as something that w- people should do Somebody should do, I should do, it should be done, whatever the case may be. Look, I, I want us to understand something about this. Generosity, God was so generous, and and I think that we've done a good job in laying this out. God mm-hmm. was so generous with laying out the way that he wanted us to be saved, that he wanted us to understand how important the impact of his word was going to have, that he gave us all these opportunities all these blessings, all these, all this access that we have to his word, and he gave it to us for this one reason, so that it could change us and we could change others. There mm-hmm. is absolutely, I just want, I want to be as clear about this as I can. There is absolutely no back door into heaven. You will not, you know, we, we sometimes, you know, you and I don't know if it's been on a podcast or whatever, but we've talked about the fact if the Lord had just let us, you know, stand at the welcome mat on the way to heaven mm-hmm. or, or polish a doorknob getting in or hold the door for people at Pearly Peter's gates or whatever, we realize that's garbage. Mm-hmm. There is absolutely no kind of get in. Mm-hmm. There is absolutely no kind of. You're the in or you're out. You're, you're absolutely in. And so what the Lord does is when he deals with the Jews, he deals with a very immature group of people. So he's going to tell them all the things they're going to need to do in explicit detail, how they're going to have to live their lives, how they're going to have to conduct themselves in these feast days, how they're going to, you know, there's a year of Jubilee. Mm-hmm. The Jews had this 50, after 50 years. Yeah, you got to release everything. Everything was, you know what, I, I, and, and maybe there's somebody out there, you know, Gary Bennett is so sharp about this stuff, knowing all these little nuances of everything. He listens to our podcast all the time. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. I have never saw throughout the Old Testament, I, I don't know how many times I've read it, that they ever actually kept the year of Jubilee, that mm-hmm. they ever made it 50 years to do what God wanted them to do. Never one time. But I knew that, no, that that was when everything was supposed to go back to square one, that that was when everything yeah, was supposed to go back to zero. Dead. God was very explicit in the way that he wanted the Jews to live their life. He gave them very minute details. He's done the opposite for us. He's given us very broad scope and let us fill in the little details. Mm-hmm. Like, like for example, in Matthew 5 and verse 16, he says, you let your light what? Shine before men. Well, how are you going to do that, Bob? Yeah, that's a, that's a, you have to, you have to do it in your own unique way. So what does that mean? If, if Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they can see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. What are we doing if we don't let our light shine? Hmm. So you think about that, you know, I, do you ever do this? Like I take the the positive or the negative. Like if Jesus gives yeah. a negative, mm-hmm. I'll look at the positive. positive what yeah. would be the positive? So then I take the same thing. I'll say, if this is the positive, that's a positive one, yeah. right? The negative is if I don't let my light shine. They won't see my good works. They won't see my good works. And they won't glorify my Father. They won't glorify my Father, which yeah. is in heaven. Mm-hmm. And before that proceeds the, you are a city on the hill, then I'm not a city on the hill. Then I've lit my lamp and put it under a bushel. That's what I've done. I've done all these things. I, I'm going through this process backwards. You know, I am the kind of person that is, I have this great and blessed hope, and I'm taking it and I'm holding on to it all by myself. You know what you got there, Bob? The stingiest person on earth. Mm-hmm. Because I've got something that is free, given to me, given to me, and now it's, I'm not going to give it to anybody else. Listen to this. 
Luke six thirty eight. All right, hold on a minute. Let me turn over there. Luke six thirty eight. Yeah. Okay. You think about being generous, like it's it's so hard for us to let go of what we have. You know, but there's there's so many things. I don't know if you ever clean out your garage. You just reorganize. You just moved your shop from a garage into a shop building, and mine's perfect right now, Bob. Right, it is perfect right now. Right, but and that's the whole thing. Like I watch these videos of some of these guys on YouTube, and they're like, you know, hey, we rearranged our shop, but and one guy was like, hey, I've had all these things. He said I had sixteen jack stands, <laughs> and he's like, what do I need? He said, well, one time in my life, he said, whenever I was running a Jeep business, wherever I where I was working on all these Jeeps, he's like, I needed sixteen jack stands. He said, at this point in my life, I don't need 16. Mm -hmm. He said, so guess what I got to do? He said, I kept four. And he said, I got to get rid of 12. And and, and he didn't he didn't throw them away. He said, I got to be generous with them. Mm -hmm. And so it was cool. But anyways, he, he, he was talking about his shop. And he's like, so what we're going to do, he's like, this table's clean. So we're going to leave this table cleaned. And he talked about another guy, how he was working so much, how he, he was so cluttered that all he had was like a, like a, uh, a 12 by 24 space that he worked on and he had everything in that little bitty space. Mm -hmm. But, but it's you like, saw my garage, right, Bob? Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so the, and so anyways, that all the guys were knocking him on YouTube. We're going, yeah, we've heard that one before. We're going to keep this, keep this table clean, you know? Mm -hmm. And that, that's the whole idea, but it's, it's hard for us. We, it's hard for us to get rid of stuff. It's hard for us to be generous with it. And, and so it's, here's what, here's what the Lord said. Luke six thirty eight. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Now, the idea of giving is not so that it's going to be given back to me, but the Lord gives us this promise that says, you can't outgive me. Mm -hmm. when, when you decide to use what you've been blessed with, to, to glorify God and to give to others, it's going to be given back to you. But also, whatever you don't give, because you, whenever you, you put this same perspective on there, from the reverse side, for the measure that you use, it's going to be measured back to you. So if you choose not to give, how is that going to be measured back to me? You know, these I love doing the podcast, but one of the reasons why I love doing it is because it challenges me. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, you know, having this discussion here, I'm sitting here studying, you know, you're saying that, and I'm already thinking ahead when you said it. I was like, okay, I got anything about the inverse of this. And, like, it makes me wonder how many things that I hold back on. You know, how, how much am I – what am I stingy with? Mm -hmm. And because I, I, I like to think that – and I think all of us do. I mean, I reckon some of us are probably know that they're <laughs> misers, you yeah. know, the Scrooge McDucks. But, you know, I, I – well, sometimes you can coupon and you can make good, good. You can make good on some things, but but what's the whole idea? So that I can have more stuff, or so I can have nicer stuff, or so that, or is it so that I can be generous? Yeah, and and you know you 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 think about this is that if you look at what precedes it, it's forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgive. Yeah, I mean, so and if, you will be forgiven. So if if I'm not generous with my time. If I'm not generous with my forgiveness, if I'm not generous with my money, if I'm not generous with everything that I got, I can't – this is a – either it's true or it's not. On the day of judgment, the Lord is going to do one of two things. He's either going to be generous with my forgiveness, generous with my time, which is forever then, right? Generous with all the things that I've wanted, man – it really makes me want to examine it. You know, if there's one thing that I could pray is that I could see myself the way the Lord does. You know, there's something we don't do too often. Uh, won't, won't you pray? Won't you pray for us? Close us out. Okay, let's do it. Lord, we're just so thankful that you love us and that you've given us so much. Lord, we know that if we tried to chart generosity... It would start from eternity, and it will run for everlasting. But we know, Lord, that generosity is, is, was expressed in his greatest gift to us and your son. And, Lord, we know that the rest of our lives will never be able to give back anything greater than that because what it did was generous, through generosity, you bought us a place with you. Through generosity, 
you purged us of our iniquities. Through generosity, you gave us the church, the place of salvation. And through generosity, Lord, you gave us your word, which provides us hope and an understanding of what we can do and what we can, what we can expect for the rest of our lives and for all of eternity. Lord, we pray that you would just help us as we, uh, we close out this series on generosity, that we could look at our lives, not just Bob and I, but everybody that's listening, and we could think about, Lord, how we need to be more generous and understanding how important generosity is to touching lives and saving souls and affecting eternity. And help us, Lord, to not be stingy with our time, with our money, with our talents, Lord, but to realize that everything we've got it's not just so we can have some kind of praise, so we can have some kind of uh, be be known for some kind of talent or known for some kind of ability or known for some kind of bank account or known for something, Lord, but so that you can be known, that you can be known through us, that you can be known through our works, that you can be known through through us as your people, your troops, your army, your church, your redeemed. Lord, help us to live our lives in understanding of how blessed generosity is and, Lord, what a blessing it is to be able to give back because, Lord, when we obeyed you in baptism and you added us to the church, we know, Lord, that we gave our lives then, and that's all we got to give. Help us to give it every day, Lord, generously. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This is the Unscripted Podcast.